The book was better. Now we're good to start. <laughs> now we're good to dive in. And there's I feel no really weird not I having feel like a full we need microphone a in front of me. <laughs> I know. I'm like, this is not how we start normally. <laughs> it's very casual. We're having a really like laid back, chill week. It's a really casual week. Okay, that's totally fine. All right. Well, let's just get going here. So, um, Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Book with Butter podcast. I am Kaylee Clark. I'm Taylor Collette. And today we will be discussing Jane Austen's persuasion, comparing it to the atrocity that Netflix is trying to pass as an adaptation of this work. Um, And we are joined by our good friends, uh, Steph and Devin from We Ship It podcast. We've had them on the show now is this their fourth time third time i don't know it's been a lot we like them they've come on lots of fun (laughs) they came on for um percy jackson and they came on for the great gatsby okay so this this will be number three listen we got there i'm very pregnant and it affects my brain (laughs) three or four i was close enough Um, but yes this is our third time uh collabing with them we also collabed on their podcast as well also talking about persuasion Um, yeah we talked about the ship of Anne and Wentworth that episode is already out um we will link it in like the description box of this episode um so if you want to hear us talk even more about persuasion then if you want to hear us talk about the good the like good the parts. good stuff because we focus like, on the book more than this atrocious movie so yeah if you don't want to hear us just I'm not biased it. at all <laughs> if you couldn't tell um, our opinions already a little spoiler for the rest of the episode never it's gonna be a doozy um yeah otherwise only announcements before we really dive into it too much is um if you have recommendations or ideas of books slash movies that you want us to include on our next reading calendar um go over to our social media to let us know those but otherwise we are recording everything so far in advance that there's really no other announcements that Um, we can do other than the fact that when this episode's come out i will have had my baby (laughs) That's true. Yeah. So exciting. Yay. This episode will come out two days after my baby's born. So. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'll be in a hospital when this gets posted. <laughs> That's exciting. But yeah. So um, if you want to see um, updates on stuff, you can check us out at TVWD Podcast on all the things, all the things, um, all the socials. And sorry, I have a little puppy who's poking his. No, he's supposed to be sleeping. You took him on a super long walk. He is supposed to be sleeping. <laughs> You're supposed to be sleeping. Mm. Um, he does still look really tired, at least. He's quiet, but... Yeah, he just wanted to say hi. Okay, you go back down. Go back to bed. Go, go back to sleep. Um, <laughs> go back to sleep. Go sleep. Um, no, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Social media. Will it come back? Who knows? <laughs> um... So really quick, before we dive into it too much, I just want to introduce our guests. If you haven't listened to one of our previous episodes, where did we ship it before? Um, we ship it podcast. You can listen to it on any platform. I believe that ours is found on anyway. Um, but the We Ship It podcast dives into your favorite and maybe not so favorite couples of all time. Um, think Elizabeth and Darcy, they've done that. Um, Harry and Ginny, we were on their episode with Harry and Ginny. Taylor had lots Percy of and Annabeth. About that. We were also on that episode. We Those two that, episodes. That became so two episodes. <laughs> because we had a lot to say. Um, but they talk ships. And it's not, it's it's a little bit more broad than ours in the fact that it's not exclusive to books, right? It's TV shows, it's movies that haven't been based on books, it's books that are only books. Um, so really broad, lots of things. You're bound to find something that you connect with and are passionate about. Um, so they they post I think every Friday we post Wednesdays 
you guys don't post the same day we do. We try our best. We try. <laughs> and that's what we do. Honestly, so. <laughs> same. Life is a joy. So <laughs> we do what we can. Yeah. But, uh, but no, yeah, so- we're excited to be back. Super excited um, to be hanging out with y'all another night another grand adventure ahead of us as we dive yeah, into this persuasion one's <laughs> this one's gonna be a fun one yes. yes um so with that i guess let's jump into it then <laughs> um let's do it so jane austen's persuasion was the final it's there's a little bit of like argument about whether persuasion or northern or abbey was the actual last book she finished before she passed. Right. But Persuasion was the last one that was published before she passed. Um, and so it was published in like 1817, 1818. Um, and we are comparing it to the 2022 Netflix adaptation. So let's talk about that Netflix adaptation. So let's the talk director. About it. <laughs> I have questions about this director. Okay, so it was directed by Carrie Cracknell. And I really, I wonder, did this director even read the book? I'm like really curious if she's familiar with Jane Austen at all, based on what I saw on the screen. Um, Honestly, same with the screenplay writers. I mean, I guess they basically got (laughs) the characters right. So they had to have at least read the book, but Ron Bass and Alice Victoria Winslow I believe. Did I get that? Yeah. Who are these people? She's she's very fancy and has three names. Those are the two people who were responsible for the screenplay for that movie. Um, Music was done by Stuart Earle. Hey, guess what, Stuart? You did it. You did good. Good 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 job, buddy. You did it. (laughs) Um, Except for the random, like, modern birdie song at the I digress. Okay. So that wasn't him. He didn't write that song, obviously, or choose to put that in there. Maybe he did. If he did, then that's the first time I have a grievance with a music person on this entire show. And we are now 51 episodes in. Um, So (laughs) casting was then done by Dixie Chasse or Chassie, however that might be However fancy you're feeling in the moment. (laughs) Honestly, it's Chasse. It's like Timothée Chalamet. There you go. If you want to say it fancy, you can say fancy. Um, but that's kind of our lineup. Obviously, a whole lot of other people go into making a movie, but mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. those are normally the main ones we focus on because I feel like they have a, the largest impact on the success of a film. So, sure. Brief, just brief summary for those who haven't seen the movie in a while or haven't seen it at all and are listening to this anyway. Um, I don't blame you. I didn't want to watch it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, I mean, for the most part, the story is the same. So it follows our main character, Anne Elliot, and Frederick Wentworth, right? Those are the, that's the main couple. They were in love. And Anne, who comes from like a, a regal family, her dad is a baron, I believe, is the title that her family holds it's a baronessy um so she's of high class born in high class and status and he was not so she is persuaded to not actually marry him oh my gosh the name of the book (laughs) um (laughs) and so then eight years go by seven eight it's debated eight i think it's eight um and he enters her life again she still hasn't married he still hasn't married Mm -hmm. they've both matured and grown except now he's this like decorated officer in the british navy he has money he has title he has all the things that her family was worried about when they were originally engaged except they both kind of struggle to communicate because it's been eight years and she thinks that he's he probably hates her now and if I were her I'd think the same thing because she broke his heart and (laughs) they just struggle to communicate and then they're they're like throw in little other potential love interests for each of them that eventually lead to them confessing that they still love each other and then all's well that ends well it's a it's a 
period piece. It's a Victorian romance. It's Jane Austen. We love it. Great um, stuff. It classic Jane. Now, how can you mess up that story? You may be wondering. Well, we're going to get into that. So <laughs> join us. <laughs> join us in this as this will be no surprise. Um, I'm going to go last. <laughs> In our last episode, I went first, which means if it were just Taylor and I, she'd go first anyway, and I'd go last. But as always, when we have guests, um, we will be, um, oh, my husband just tried calling me. Nope, it's fine. He's good. He, he said, never mind. Um, <laughs> we're good. We're distracted. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, so we're going to let our guests go first. I don't know which one of you wants to go first, Devin or Seth. I'll let Steph Either go. Either one of you. And then Taylor and then myself. And then, so we'll all do our number two. And then we'll all do our number one grievance. Because there's four of us, we reduced the number of grievances to just two instead of three. Otherwise, this episode could get really, really long. So. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I just have to preface this with, it was a, beautiful movie it was very pretty but I tend to be a little bit more tough on Jane Austen films because I just I freaking love Jane Austen so much so when they add like when they add director's choice type stuff I'm like you didn't have to because the story was so dang perfect so in my opinion and my first grievance has to do with breaking the fourth wall so I think the reason that they did this was because so like there were these asides because I think Anne was the narrator here and there were these like little asides where she would turn to us like as if you're in the office when they're like looking out out of the camera it, at you I, it was, was like they were trying us. to make her gym from the office right. with the looks <laughs> they they kind of the camera. <laughs> And like, she would just look at you and like, give you a little aside that no one in the story could hear, but you could hear. So it was like breaking the fourth wall. And for me, like, sometimes I like that in a film, but it just really took me out of the story here because when it comes to like a time piece, like a a time period piece, I don't Mm want to be reminded that like the fourth wall, because like, that's sort of a newer thing, the fourth wall breaking in movies, but not only that, like it takes you out of the moment. And for me, like, I guess like probably why they were doing it is because a lot of what you get in the book is Anne's pining. Like it's not a ton of action. It's a lot of Anne's like uh, regret. Yeah. But I It is reflection and stuff. Yeah. Right. I, but I don't see in these moments of breaking the fourth wall, like regret mostly. I just think they're like little funny asides. No, it's no, They're very, uh, they're very quippy nods or it, like looks about her family or about like the situation it's, it's that she's in like uh what's it called very elizabeth bennett mm. not exploitation yes. what is it exposition that's the word I'm yep. looking for. it's like expository <laughs> <laughs> sorry i got there it, it just feels very expository where it's like we're trying to cram this whole book into less than two hours we yep. just need to like tell you what's going on catch you up to speed it's not even that long of a book like Jane no. Austen oh. novels aren't these huge things and it's this like is a short 100 one. pages yeah <laughs> she's just and she she comes across as a little like sassy which I just think is like out of character for Anne and like I mm-hmm. I don't know I just they really kind of threw me off like I could maybe see it working like you said maybe in Pride and Prejudice maybe <laughs> If but they like made for the entire right. thing modern, right? Yeah, don't keep it as yep. a Regency setting, time period wise. Yep, and then throw in this. Oh, but there's a camera there, and there's an audience. Right. Like, mm. right? No, it's out make of place. it a modern, an actual modern day telling. Right, like, or or so do it in such a way. I feel like they could have done it in such a way where they start the film with her like telling a story. Mm -hmm. and like establish that this is her retelling it so those Mm -hmm. little asides almost come Mm -hmm. across as oh this is her still telling you the story or they like cut to her telling you the story in a different like and then cut back but they didn't establish that this is her retelling that's just she's like oh and by the way you're here with me in this moment of privacy where i'm drinking wine 
Let oh, me tell we'll you get into thoughts. the wine, dang it. <laughs> but listen, <laughs> Kaylee, so you say, said last time, Kaylee, like, I forget the word for what Jane Austen does. Like, she was the first author to use, what is the phrase that it's called? It's like, she's she's speaking in third person, but it's like the person's mind. Oh, like, yeah. Um, or no, third no, person limited. Um, yeah, it's, what is the word? Gosh, dang it. Um, I remember you brought it up in our podcast and I was like oh dang I haven't heard that since English class <laughs> um, yeah, like, I was I was prepared last time so <laughs> this movie ruined everything including her ability my to brain is stuff. I'm just mad now okay <laughs> just no, mad. <laughs> it's like kind of cool because like Jane Austen was the first author really to like write in this way where you're kind of questioning like you get the thoughts of all these different characters as if it was in third person, but also in inter- like their internal mind. So indirect speech, free indirect, indirect speech. speech. Yeah, free indirect speech. Free indirect. Which yep. I think that's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, give me a minute, I'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> and I think like that would have been like that's maybe what they were thinking of highlighting with this. I just think it's the mm-hmm. it's kind of the opposite of free indirect speech because you totally know who's thinking it at the time that it's being said and it doesn't it doesn't leave any mystery to that it like I don't know it also Mm -hmm. just breaks me out of it so I I I just didn't think it was the right choice for persuasion but that's that's my first grievance (laughs) and it's a good one yeah Yeah, I mean it's it's a big one (laughs) because it stands out it really does yeah if this was strictly just a modern movie I'd agree that I think that that is a cool technique to do when you have your lead your your female protagonist mostly doing a lot of the the thought process and uh, like uh, taylor said expository nature of this it would have been great in twilight like twilight (laughs) they could have done that would have been great could have seen inside of bella's head instead of her just being a blank slate (laughs) oh gosh (laughs) those twilight movies man we're doing yeah. twilight next yeah i know i saw that and I was oh like, yes oh i have so many thoughts <laughs> <laughs> um so i'll dive right into mine i guess um i don't know which yeah. one to choose as my sec because they're both just kind of grievances i don't really have a preference as to which one i favor more than the other but since we're talking about Anne, let's stick with Anne. um <laughs> I was not a fan of the portrayal of Anne's sadness or lack thereof. (laughs) Um, I mean, there's scenes where she is, again, going with the modern nature of how they're presenting the movie, like face down in a pillow, just like laying like flat, like almost uh with planking planking in in her head. (laughs) There's scenes where she's like crying in a bathtub. And it's just, but there's just like, those are, those aren't like lasting moments. They're just like quick scenes. So we don't actually get to see her. They almost feel superficial. They're right. like superficial exactly. sadness. It's, it's superficial sadness and not grief, Correct. which is what it should be portrayed as, which is grief. It's, Correct. I and, just and it's almost presenting my high school boyfriend. Her... Correct. I'm crying. I need yeah, a tub of almost, ice cream. It's almost degrading her age because she is an older woman. Right. But they're presenting her almost as like this teenager that just broke up with her like three Even month old. Eight years. Right. Yes. Her yeah. three, three month long relationship. Right. Like but the thing is, is that grief and the thing with grief is I like there's that um, there's that image I've seen. I think a lot of people have I hope see it have seen it so they understand what I'm trying to describe where it's like grief isn't there's a glass and then the ball get smaller over time mm-hmm. grief is grief stays the same size but then the glass around the grief gets bigger because your like ability to manage the grief improves right the grief doesn't get smaller specifically and especially when it comes to like the loss of a loved one right like it does still hurt and it can still hurt mm-hmm. a decade later when you've yeah. lost somebody that you really love Absolutely. But your ability to manage that grief grows and improves. It's been eight years. She's not going to be sobbing face down in her bed still about it. Or crying with a glass of wine in her bed. <laughs> She's not an alcoholic. I'm no, so and that's another thing. Like they, they portrayed her grief 
if you want to call it that way, through her drinking. Like almost every scene, she has a glass of some type of alcohol. Okay, and sometimes it's a whole bottle. Visibly drunk very often i'm like that is so not an ann's character <laughs> like, no, this girl is drunk running around the house like putting jam on her face so i'm like what the heck is this <laughs> i love i love the scene where she's face. they just finished the the dinner scene and her dad and her sisters are uh, no it's her dad her sister and um uh, the dad's um this like friends or whatever Mrs. i forget Clay. what her name is but like she they're they're like kind of together in a way but they're sitting at the kitchen table and like she's she's there with like her uh like a migraine because she's was she's drinking got a hangover. Before. yeah she has a hangover, and got like, a hangover. that's not and <laughs> Anne. no. too nice to to like she's too good she has she's too moral in a Pure. sense right she's like put together she's, yeah, she's that's put also put very together, true woman. She thinks like she's not just someone that just like, yeah, tonight's a good drinking night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Five o'clock, so, nine o'clock. <laughs> I'll talk, no, I'll talk more about that. I'm sure you will. Amongst um, a bunch of other things with my. But no. Uh, and then uh, what's um, what's their advisor because the mother passed away? Uh, Lady. Oh, um, Lady Russell. Lady Russell. Russell. Like she walks yeah. into her bedroom, which her bedroom is like pretty but like pretty for like uh, a teenager's bedroom like it has like nice like yeah it's kind artsy of art on the wall but mm-hmm. it's very kid like so that's also a side grievance <laughs> number two. but she walks into the room and she's like oh you're still like hung up about this guy right and like it just doesn't seem genuine like mm-hmm. real sadness so that's my first grievance that's fair that's yeah it like I said it did it felt very superficial and you almost were like annoyed a little bit rather than like empathetic for her right I didn't really feel anything for her sadness <laughs> I was it only felt whiny <laughs> yes yeah. whiny is a good word for it or you're just like, okay, you rejected him. Like, get over it. Let me see that pouty face. Hmm. <laughs> My five-year-old oh, handles God. sadness better than this grown woman. Um. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, Next. Anyways. Um, all right. So mine is like a anti-grievance grievance. <laughs> If you watch the movie and you don't pay attention to the story, it's a great movie. <laughs> Let me explain. <laughs> Beautiful music. Like we said, good job, Stuart. Beautiful setting. Like the setting is so pretty. There's the locations the that they shot great. at were beautiful. All just gorgeous. So pretty to watch. Like it was very reminiscent of the 2005 Kira Knightley Pride and Prejudice with those sweeping grand just gorgeous right. shots and I was like that's great but then you inhabit it with this terrible story <laughs> and this beautiful setting kind of goes to waste and it's the same with like even the actors I don't personally fault the actors I think they did a great job acting what was given to them like they didn't right yeah, for the, the most script. for the most part i can agree with you on that for the most like part. yeah but they got some really big name actors you know sure. and i think that like physically i wasn't upset with any of the changes like i think the casting i wasn't mad about it's more what they then did with those characters that i have problems with so i feel like they had all the right ingredients they had the the good solid foundations and then they combined it into something that went horribly horribly Did you already mention the music? Yeah. Well, I I said that I liked the music. Yeah. Um, I know that was also on your list. For obviously that, uh, (laughs) you know, they they wanted to I thought it was weird that they ended, they finished the movie, not with, again, are you a modern day telling of this story or are you sticking with the Regency period? You finish it with this modern song sung by Birdie. No hate against Birdie. I, she's great. No, she's she's great. a very talented artist. 
beautiful song, beautiful voice. Right. Thought it was a weird choice to finish the movie on. Like, <laughs> yeah. That's the one grievance I've got about the music. <laughs> like, yes. Yeah. Other than that, beautiful music. Um, and so it was just, I was really hopeful going in. I really tried to keep an open mind as much as the trailer was a little weird and the, the breaking the fourth wall stuff. I was like, eh, this could go either way, but I really tried to go in with an open mind. And so when it really did just take a, a turn for the worse, I was mad right. that they had almost wasted such beautiful scenes. <laughs> Because yeah. I don't ever want to watch this movie again. But I'd like, even such beautiful compare shots. some of those like scenes to ones that were from Bridgerton. Like they looked like yeah. great, mm, yep. set, like great, great scenes, a great setting. Another Netflix original set in this other time. Right. But Bridgerton sets itself up immediately as not authentic. Even for Regency. even from the yeah, exactly. <laughs> like they they kind of like from the get-go have like the more modern music i mean it's yep. still like a string quartet rendition quartet. of a modern song Correct. but like they kind of established across the board this is a alternate reality right. yes yep you're right and i honestly i do love it like like the film itself looking at it aesthetically I love the colors mm -hmm. they choose, the outfits mm -hmm. that they choose. Yeah, I'm fully great. sold when I'm just looking at it and I mute it. <laughs> you mute it. <laughs> <laughs> but then when you get to the point of like, like you said, I think Kaylee's got it right. It's like, just choose. Like you have an identity problem. And that yeah. is, that's a much deeper issue for a film, especially such a beloved story. Right. Like you really have to be, 100 percent would you solid prefer on what you are being both more kaylee and stephanie being that you are more uh jane austen fans would you prefer it to be a modern retelling i wouldn't point, mind it yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> i wouldn't mind it i would not prefer it over the story itself as is right but I. Yeah. but if they had the if they had to choose mush right. of a collage of different modern with what, with, with what they did yeah. yes if this script was what they wanted to stick with, then just make the whole thing happen in like 2012. Like, yeah. like, Specifically, 2012. <laughs> <laughs> and then eight years later, 2020. And then the pandemic's happening too. And then you can throw <laughs> in your you own go. twist around that. Like, <laughs> That's why they get stuck together. Because it's, it's quarantine. They quarantine together. They can't leave the house. Okay. Uh, it's like when they redo Louisa those I would watch that. <laughs> it's like when they redo those Shakespeare films in like the modern day like 10 things I hate about you like She's they're the so man. cheesy Lewis. but I love them I'm like this is mm -hmm. you can just like draw parallels but it's not it is modern it is completely set in modern day that right. I well, like Clueless I is like one of the most classic like retellings of Emma yep ever Exactly. And so it's like you can do it very successfully, mm -hmm. but you also look what at like want to do. Yep. <laughs> but then you look at like the, the 2005 Pride and Prejudice is also super beloved and like everyone loves it. But it's very period like that is what it is. It stays in its lane. Clueless stays in its lane. This one's driving down the middle of the road. <laughs> trying to be in both lanes and everyone's mad <laughs> yep <laughs> what happened grand so. good analogy for it actually yes. <laughs> so that's uh that's my number two just it could have been so much and it it just wasn't <laughs> it just wasn't um i would say okay so my number two there were lots of things that i could focus on in things but that we, we saw quite a bit of overlap so what i'm going with is for the most part they they kept all of the essential characters in this movie the one that they got rid of that i'm mad they got rid of was mrs smith who is the widow that Anne befriends at the end mm -hmm. of or i mean towards the end in bath when she finally rejoins her family in bath because 
it's through Mrs. Smith that she realizes the true intentions of her of cousin, yeah. Mr. William Elliot. And also just creates another friend and another confidant for her. And that's something that I'm going to talk a whole lot of more about Anne in my, as my first point, but the movie really makes it seem like her family hates her, but outside of her family, she doesn't really have many friends. Like everybody she's acquaintanced with is through her family. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah, she's friends with Louisa and, you know, and the, um, and Henrietta, but that's because those are the sisters of her brother-in-law. Mm-hmm. I yeah. like that Mrs. Smith is an example of like, no, Anne is likable. Mm-hmm. She can make friends on her own. And she's she a likable would, person. <laughs> she would have friends. Like she's been single for these eight years. Eight years. She exactly. hasn't just been alone at home <laughs> drinking wine every day. She would have friends. Yeah. Exactly. So I, I, yeah, it's like by not showing any of that and by eliminating her literally only friend that's really like involved in the story, it just makes her look sad. Well, she's <laughs> very close with Lady Russell, but again, Lady Russell is her mom's like a mother friend. figure. It's like a mother even. figure. Yeah. But that's a whole other thing that's like basically omitted is the fact that she does miss her mom. Mm-hmm. And does they mention it like once. That, like, yeah. In the very beginning, they're like, oh, yes, your mother died. Reading over, okay, like, the, uh, what, it, what is the sister said that she gets? They, like they the read through. Genealogy, yeah, report the genealogy or whatever. Of the family, yeah. <laughs> but it's just, oh, yeah, his, like, biography. Mm-hmm. He's very, very keen on that, her father. But it's just interesting that it's, that that's what they, they chose to remove that. And while I did actually, that was one thing that I did like, that's like, I guess an honorable mention. I did really like Lady Russell in the movie. She mm. was like the one redeeming thing to me. Right. Um, they have that close relationship. Like she's got more friends than that. <laughs> she's a likable person. So, <laughs> um, I almost feel like they made Lady Russell almost too likable though. Yeah, probably. But hold <laughs> I, on. Feel I have like a child calling book. me. So I'm going to do okay. for a second. Mm. I'll talk about Lady Russell. I feel like in the book, the, you kind of like are resentful towards her as you should be. Correct. Because she ruins the relationship. Like she's the one who essentially persuaded Anne to give up on Wentworth. Yeah. And she's not and, necessarily like, she has no feelings for that. I like that she ruined this. She's like, oh, you'll get over she's it. Not, <laughs> yeah. She's not like regretting it. Right. She's like, I did, I I did you right a call. favor. Yeah. I did you a yeah. favor. <laughs> And so you were like, I appreciate that she's like this motherly figure in the book, but that Anne learns to like make her own decisions and not rely on Lady Russell. Right. Whereas I feel like in the movie, they make her this really likable motherly figure. And then Anne never really like disregards what she says. Right. Instead, Makes a choice Lady for Russell. Lady Russell changes her mind and is like, oh, I'm sorry. I made a mistake. Like, yeah, an you should have. And that's great for Lady Russell, but it's, but it's different than what happened in the book. And honestly, it's- another character that I think is actually really good in the movie is her father. <laughs> oh my <laughs> like, goodness, I love him. These characters that are meant to contrast like so loudly the main character like mrs bennett in pride and prejudice and the father in this movie i just like i don't know i think they picked a really good character who's really like materialistic and funny Mm -hmm. and see that's the kind of humor like you can bring into a movie like this and it doesn't take away from the message yeah because he's like removed enough from the essential story right that if you tweak him to be the comedic relief a little bit or even like Mary, who I feel like they really cranked yes. up the volume they on did, her. Uh, but I, I actually really like it. But I thought it was fun. I like it too. Yes. <laughs> but they're like removed enough from the essential story that if you change that, I'm like, oh yeah, it's kind of funny. It's when you change those crucial characters that you're like, oh, you can't right. make them the comic relief. They need Agreed. to be the character they need to be. 
Agreed. So, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, we'll see how much longer Kaylee's gonna be. <laughs> I think she did. Do you think she had any more to say? Oh, good. Um. Oh. Oh, oh yes, she has a hand. She's waving a hand. Hold on. No, I just have other honorable mentions. <laughs> Oh, okay. I'll be right back. Before we move on to our um, next grievance, hold I just on. Have more yes, hold go on. ahead. Devin, Devin has to go. But did you have anything else to say on the on your second point? Oh, um, well, I just kind of missed the banter between them and just like the relationship, honestly. Okay. So, and the fact that again, it, it again reflects on. I don't know. It started a good conversation. <laughs> I miss him. Okay. No. Okay. No, you really did it. <laughs> um, okay, so now we can jump into honorable mentions. Oh, we have those? I if mean, you have any. if you have if any. You have we any. kind of were mentioning like- some of the characters that we like just recently yeah well um, and i'll say an honorable mention in general for the movie is i i like how netflix diversifies their casts mm. Mm. yeah agreed in this time period would half of the characters have been black probably not but i but I, like I loved it. seeing that on the screen yeah bridgerton yeah. has really opened up a whole new mm-hmm. thing with that and i that's something i really like um are we doing grievance too, or did we like? Were we supposed to already mention it? Sorry. No, we're just doing honorable. No, mentions. okay, we're honorable, honorable mentions, mentions then, and then you can dive into your. Then I'll either either with side that. grievances because, or things that you liked. Okay, good, good. Yeah, I we mentioned the father. Um, I just think he was really funny, um, and I also agree. I do like the diversity that's being added to it. I think it adds a whole new layer of like things to Louisa think about. Louisa was great. I mm. love. Oh Louisa. yeah. They were beautiful did, too. Like the whole cast was yeah. beautiful. <laughs> yes, a lot of beautiful people in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Something that I would say about sorry, now I have a cat meowing at my door. No, you cannot. <laughs> um, <laughs> Something that I will say about the sisters is, well, I heard like kind of how you were talking about how like the the dad was almost overplayed a little bit, but he's there to be that contrast. Yeah. along with along with her sisters um but i i don't like how it, it borderlined too closely to cruel on my for my for my part yeah in it, the book it, they're indifferent towards Anne's opinions they don't necessarily not rude but they're not outright cruel to her yeah that's fair yeah and in the like movie, especially Elizabeth. it's like Elizabeth's cool. a bit of a jerk sometimes. Oh, she's yeah. totally. But even the dad, and where it's like, the, just the whole beginning. Like honestly, it was from we the couldn't very think beginning of anything of this else movie. to put about you. But you're here's so the boring. thing: in the book, yeah. there's not more descriptions about the other sisters either. The book is literally facts about the family. It's when they were born. The details that the dad adds in are oh, this daughter of mine got married on this date Mm -hmm. to this person and then had these children. It's not like he added in all these like adjectives and descriptors, but then didn't for one of his three daughters, right? Like that doesn't happen in the book. (laughs) Because she's the middle child. (laughs) Yeah, on the middle. I was just like, that is not a notion from that time (laughs) period. That's again, pick what you want to focus on. Are you Regency or are you not? (laughs) Kaylee's especially sensitive to that since she is a classic middle child. <laughs> I did not have my time. No, I'm, just <laughs> I'm not even a true middle child. When you look at it, you're the true, you're actually the middle child of our class. I know. But, but with age gaps, it doesn't line up. It well. doesn't. You're more <laughs> the middle child than I am. Yeah, you're more a youngest. Yeah. Despite having two more younger siblings. <laughs> Oh, psychology. Um, Lovely. Um, I'm not really what that comes down to, had, right? <laughs> I think another just honorable mention that I want to 
I don't think this will be covered by any of your other grievances. Hit me with it. I'm like trying to run through it in my brain. Yeah, I think just like the... I specifically want to take a moment to talk about the drinking. I know we kind of mentioned it already, but just kind of like that element across Across the the whole movie. Like, a lot of drinking. (laughs) (laughs) Well, don't get me wrong. It's not like people didn't drink in that time period. Right. I know, but they did. But it was more, more men than women. Yeah. Especially of high society. Again, Mm -hmm. when you're looking at the class that they're in and the kinds of events and socialization gatherings that they're that they're a part of. Would they drink wine? Yeah. Would the men also drink port and beer and like other alcoholic beverages? Yes. They were not drinking to get drunk. (laughs) Usually. Not if not if women were present. Not if women were present. Mm. Well, and I think men that's another, themselves, that was a whole other story. <laughs> I think that's another point going off of that, and maybe on top of the drinking. Now that I think about it, it's just like the that whole class. I feel like there's not a lot of class in the movie when these are supposed to be very like well-to-do <laughs> people. Some of their actions and the stuff that they do and the way that they talk and act, I'm like, this is not your station. You're not like you are not acting your station and like when certain things happened I'm like yeah that's kind of funny but that would never happen Mm -hmm. and like and it's like when it comes to like the drinking specifically too like you look back and you see like Miss Bennett Mrs. Bennett getting like drunk at parties or whatever but that was like they also looked at that as not her station and like Mr. Darcy like brings that up when she's doing that but in this case it's like a pr- it's like a rampant problem Everyone, throughout yeah. and like Anne's like drinking by herself in her house and I feel like that's a very like 20 how would you dance to Beethoven to by myself not... in, a room, in my room with a bottle of red exactly. no that is not <laughs> no a mo- it ain't it. but it's um, like this idea that Jane Austen one of her big things in writing besides romance was the making the class levels known and like talking about the classist societies Mm. and that was a really big like yeah her texts are are very historical in that sense and then they just kind of said well we don't care no (laughs) we don't care about any of it (laughs) yeah and just the storyline in general they kind of just erased the importance of the classes it was more emphasized money than class it's like mm. it's not just and that money plays poor. a role yeah but, but it's not just about being poor it's also about like your station and the titles and they went yep. about it a really weird way in the movie yeah and i agree there's also so moving away from this i guess <laughs> moving away no, from good. this um there's also that scene where she was telling about her dream with the octopus oh, yeah. and how she was an octopus and how she was sucking her own face or something like that like sucking sucking her face so weird why <laughs> not necessary i forgot about that. not again <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna talk about it so talk about it. and then the the old oh was that lady? part of your was that part of your thing no, it's just, it just it goes into part anna. of my okay. examples of anne and what Fair they enough. do to her so but okay. i do love how then that like supposedly royal lady is like i've had that dream also too. they're <laughs> supposed to be they're not they're they're supposed to be irish and they're not mm. no in the movie that whole scene was just a difficult trip. to watch and endure <laughs> it, was, it was a trip yeah oh, and like you so like sad. you were saying earlier i think they make elliot uh is it william william elliot out to mm-hmm. be too William, good yeah. of a guy in some of those scenes because he like adds into well, the conversation that, to make it less awkward for oh that's sorry my point no that is oh, not yeah, taylor I'm sorry mm, yeah. okay, yeah. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> so let's we, just go into so then let's that, just that is my even says that we'll talk all right about it. sorry we'll talk about that we'll talk about that we'll talk about that there's a Anyways. lot of overlap between everything <laughs> <laughs> they all connect <laughs> um 
so uh, actually i think stephanie started so go ahead yeah. Steph. so stephanie yeah. what's, what's your what's your remaining grievance we've talked about this over and over and over again but it's the modernity of it it's like it's just not for me i'm an austin lover and i just think they don't they don't give themselves to the modern side of what they're trying to do enough and i have like examples here that just like really threw me out of the Jane Austen film Um, and like I do I do think this came from you know we saw Bridgerton come onto the scene and they really tastefully did the modern Regency era mix but they did it in a way that did not take you out of the film like the songs yes you would recognize the tune but it's in the strings like it it, Mm -hmm. they did it well Um, they didn't add modern day slang right right well like she she constantly called Wentworth like her ex. I'm like, I hated excuse that. me. No, no, no. Please don't do that. that <laughs> no, no, no. So weird. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so there was that. And then they said Now we're worse like, than exes. We're, we're friends. friends. <laughs> I'm like, what is this? An Instagram like story? What the hell? Way to take like, like so- the beautiful <laughs> language from the book and just totally bastardize it. Yeah. Like, just- and then mm-hmm. she's like saying like, oh, a five in London is a 10 in Bath. Like, Things like this. I I'm never just like, trust a 10. You'll be a 13. I'm like, this is not a thing that existed. Like- right. Right. It just like, it just wasn't, it wasn't for me. And like, I don't know, it, it especially made Anne, like we said before, just seem sassy and seem like, an, like a, like she was on social media rather than she was like home, like grappling with her grief. It's like, stop it. I don't like that. And I don't know, I, and you know, you see some really well done aesthetic, beautiful pieces come out in the 2020 era. Like with, I don't know if you guys have seen Emma, the new Emma Mm -hmm. remake. Um, Mm -hmm. I really liked it. I know some people did not, but like you have a chance to really remake this film and make it beautiful. Like the 2005 Pride and Prejudice, like the 2021 Emma, but you don't have to change the actual content to become this like modern weird hybrid and so I just think they get it wrong we've talked about it enough like I think throughout Mm -hmm. this episode but that was like my main grievance was wow you had such a great cast like Taylor was saying wow you had such great scenery you just missed the mark for me yeah I feel like it's also you don't make you didn't make people playlists Yep. At that, time. <laughs> that did not happen. Sharing sharing sheet music with a person is not considered sharing a playlist with them. They did not have their own version of a mixed tape that you gave your boyfriend. Like that's not the ancient ye old mixtape. <laughs> like, and I feel like part of the reason that it was so jarring as well to hear those phrases is because then they would also pull straight lines from the from book. From the text, yeah. And so it'd be this beautiful written like word and it would be like so good. And then the next line, they're like, I don't trust a 10. And you're like, what? 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 And it's what? so <laughs> obvious when they took language directly from Austin because it, it stands is out. so much more elevated, so much mm-hmm. it's poetic, like contrasting that to the language and the, the writing that right. the writers did. It's awful. It's like <laughs> it's, so it's like bad. a high schooler. Mm-hmm. It's like a high schooler writing a paper the and copying and pasting right. parts <laughs> of the text. Right. And That's... you can clearly see what they wrote and what they copied. Well, not only teacher, is it modern yes. language, <laughs> yeah. knows very well. <laughs> but not only is it modern language, it makes her seem like she's Gen Z. When clearly in yes. this film, she's like she's like millennial she's like the gen x generation right now like she's like older and she's like more mature and going through this grief in a different phase of her life and this makes her seem like a petty high schooler and i don't like it so um, yeah i concur mm-hmm. all right so i'll dive into mine as well um we haven't talked a lot about wentworth um but I guess I'll talk a little bit about that now. Um, oh, I think I'm going to disagree with you, Devin. I think you will too. Oh. But I just felt like there was a lack of chemistry between these two. 
Oh, yeah. um, at the end of the movie, and because Stephanie was like, "Well, what'd you think?" And I was like, "Because we watched this together. This was when I visited her. We did we did a oh, okay. like an Instagram story like as we were watching it, and, oh, and right, she asked right, she asked me yes. like, "What what I think?" I was like, "Well." I wish there was more like <laughs> I felt like I wanted more from it like it was just oh definitely I I asked yeah. I, I I said like that's it like that's that's the story she's like yeah that's the story I'm like that's it They're like come on <laughs> I wanted there to just be more intimacy between the two to really showcase the um the longing that they both desire and they i think they had a scene where it was so close to that and that was when they are on the beach and he walks down to her and i think that's mm. the scene where i want i like it's almost there like it's so close but i it's want so close more. but still not quite there Correct. because it's still more awkward than yes, longing i agree it, mm-hmm. it, it came off as more awkward and then then she had that i forget what the line was after but it kind of broke the whole emotion of it all and i was oh, like the line that's where she says now we're worse than exes. oh yes we're, we're friends, friends. That's yes where and she i was said like that stupid line <laughs> you almost had like good strong feelings for each other it started so strong that scene did Yes, that that was the yeah. that was one, and and I think they have other. That was one good, of the copy and paste scenes. <laughs> <laughs> I think they have other good moments, but I just wish there was more interaction between them that really sparked. Like, yes, yes. this has been a relationship that they've been apart for so long, and it's but still, the love is still there. Correct. You almost, or at least for me, I wasn't really rooting too hard for Wentworth in this movie. I was kind of like Steph I know over here is struggling to up. contain herself. <laughs> I know no, that they're I gonna think end I can up agree together. with I think I can agree with Steph in the sense that I was rooting for Wentworth because compared to all of the other men in this movie, Wentworth was a, the most class act. Mm, he was. I yeah. was rooting for Wentworth. I was not rooting for Anne. That's where I <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's where it was hard. That's where it was hard. Fair. Fair. Like I Wentworth is my perfect grumbly dark like oh I just love him he's like my little Darcy guy I just really <laughs> liked the actor that they picked he was very I think good. the actor was great and, and I she, didn't like him I just, just felt like they musical and like silly but not in like a sunshine and gloom way it was more like in a I don't want to say stupid because she's not stupid but more just like a sassy like just not serious and then like he was very serious whimsical yeah whimsical. i Flip don't it. know who to fault Flip it. i don't know who to fault but the chemistry was not there was not there right and, and i, I don't did know not if they just longing, didn't and i did not get pining yeah, i got awkwardness they didn't give him the chance the end scene where she runs after him i i, I get more emotion but again i want like i, I finished the movie i was like okay was but like minutes. i want more <laughs> like two minutes is not well, enough but it was like that end yeah. scene i was like where it almost doesn't make it as much sense because there was no foundation set up Correct. in the movie no. for it the book sets up a lot of foundation through all of this just like slow like ultimate slow burn if you're really a slow is. burn fan book this is ultimate is slow you. burn the movie does not have that present <laughs> they also cut his letter down quite a bit in the movie like mm. they only read like a little bit and i feel like and i wanted him to i wanted cut- it to be in his voice not stupid hands i'm sorry <laughs> yeah. the way she reads and- it like ruined it <laughs> And I feel like they cut out some of the really good stuff. And like, he's not supposed to mention Mr. Elliot, like William at all in the letter. Like that's not part of it. Like by that point, that's done. Like, and so the fact that they brought that up again in the movie, like that's part of his decision-making, like, no. And he like kind of takes on some of the blame. He's like, I've been resentful. I've been unjust. And you really just like feel for him in that moment. And his letter in the movie, I was like, hi. (laughs) (laughs) I feel that. I do feel like we're let down a little bit with the romance. Like Pride and Prejudice just gives you such good scenes. A romance. What the 
even just the, to be. the freaking hand flex. Yes, there was none of that. <laughs> none of it. Subtle and little. that's what makes you root for a Jane Austen couple is this like slow burn, like what does he think? Unspoken what does she think? Oh my god, chemistry. Yes, this back and, and I was just forth. like Wentworth, like you can come over here and <laughs> leave her. She's, I don't know. Yep. Yep. Well, yep. the annoying thing, I'll, I'll get into it. Never mind. I'm trying to jump into my number one too early. Taylor, you go first. Well, mine, it, I mean, did you have anything done, else to add? Done, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. I'm good. That was it. Okay, perfect. And that kind of flows into mine off of Mr. Lentworth. I'm going to talk about Mr. Elliot, who they really, they really change. And I, I'm trying to separate my own personal feelings from just the cold hard facts here. So I'll, I'll talk <laughs> about the cold hard facts and then I'll talk about my own personal feelings. The, the fact of the matter is they took a villain and turned him more into like this second love interest, kind of skeezy, comic relief kind of character. Like they, mm -hmm. they essentially like, lessened how much of a douche she is <laughs> yeah i remember watching it with steph and being like wait i like this guy but i'm not supposed to like i know yeah. there's a reason why i'm not supposed to like this guy i just don't know why yet and then you don't really figure out until the end where he's like s talking to another girl while Anne's like walking down the oh, alley he's not just like talking that. he's not just talking oh he's smooching he with i know but <laughs> but that's just it they resolve his thing like that they're like Oh, right. They he's don't be really. bad guy. It was lazy. The way they did it in the movie yeah. was so lazy. It was ridiculous. <laughs> it's like they forgot and they were like, oh, she kind of has this thing with Mr. Elliot. Maybe we should resolve that. Oh, we'll just have him making out on the side of the road and she can be like, oh, okay, I'm done with you. Because they almost make it seem like he has a chance with Anne. When in the book, he didn't have a chance in the world. <laughs> like, Anne rejected him from the get-go. Yes. Anne was like, I am Wentworth or die like <laughs> well just because she questions his true motives from the beginning in the book right yeah and then and in the movie of, they kind of show that he just says his intentions instead and i'm like yeah what? he's yeah very i actually forward, <laughs> yes which i was like I, I, I i'm actually that. here to make sure that those two don't have a baby good okay cool cool we're on the same page <laughs> great and she like <laughs> admires him for his candor and i'm like that's yeah not what happened. and she <laughs> at, she at one point says like there's something there and when um uh, mrs the who's with what's lady russell lady russell she doesn't mm -hmm. deny that there's like a chance which she like definitely does in the book she's like they're never in a million years and so it it does it it makes them this legitimate second male lead and you're like that's not who this character is supposed to be he's supposed to be this bad guy who's here because he needs to marry he either needs to marry a daughter or he like needs to stop like her dad from having a son like he's like here with very specific intentions and he's not gonna let anyone get in his way and he's conniving and manipulative and like a bad, genuinely bad guy. And they took that and made this kind of suave, sly, very, very attractive, attractive man <laughs> <laughs> who like kind of is there just, you know, I have a purpose, but also Anne's real cute so maybe i'll hit on her too but i'm kind of flipping about it and it, they just ruined it they ruined his character which is a bummer because i love this actor he's so good he's so hot and very hot so it agreed it was hard because i did i just wanted Isn't to like almost in... root for him he's in crazy rich asians, crazy rich rich asians yeah. job. my favorite movie such a good uh it's so it's good. a great movie um it's so good and he's great so I already have this kind of like love for that actor and that really this is where my personal feelings you can't get in the hate way. him then because yeah I couldn't I was like I like him too much <laughs> and when they didn't make him as evil as he was in the book when he was straight up about his intentions when he seemed kind of genuine in his pursuit of Anne I was like 
you know, I don't dislike him. <laughs> not a bad second choice. No, I was like, he's not bad. And then again, they almost did his character do a disservice by at the last minute being like, oh yeah, and then he's making out with this chick and then marries her, which she doesn't do in the book. She's no, a mistress. Does. No, well, I she's guess a mistress. More of a mistress situation. Yeah, that's true. They're not happy. But, 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 the, Jane but they do end up, give them happy. They do end up like they're together, quote unquote. Together. They run off. Yeah. But it's not supposed to be this happy ending for them, like the movie shows, where it's this happy wedding and everyone's there and it's great and la di da. Like, no. Just no. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. That's That's my big grievance. And I, it was especially like strong because of the actor. <laughs> Good old Henry Golden. He's great. All right. All right. I now the already, why don't we? She's like getting over. ready to do it. <laughs> I've already ranted a lot, but like, and this is another thing that's been brought up repeatedly. But like, my whole number one grievance is just. And yep and we've already mentioned things but there's still just a lot to dive into so we've mentioned how the movie basically turns her into an alcoholic which is not a thing um we've talked about how it removes her maturity right and i just want to dive into that basically a lot more so mm-hmm. Anne is described as being and, and it's mentioned in the movie by Wentworth once, but he, um, he like disclaims that it's during an emergency, you're very level-headed. But the fact of the matter is, it's not just during an emergency, it's all the time. Anne is, uh, is not full of drama. Like she's not this high, like especially compared to her sisters, again, the sisters are supposed to be there to be an additional contrast to her character. Mm-hmm. But the contrast doesn't even really work that well for me because of they don't remarks. keep Anne's character yeah. the way she's yeah. supposed to be. Anne is, she's still very feminine, but she isn't catty. She's not this, you know, she doesn't go into hysterics when things don't go her way or when there's drama. She doesn't but yell she out does the window. in this movie. She doesn't yell. She doesn't burst into tears. She doesn't drink herself a on into. Her face. A, a, it's so bad. What they did to her character <laughs> is so bad. And I've seen a lot of people say like they tried to make Anne into an Elizabeth or into an Emma. And while I I I would even, I've even said that before, but I still don't even think that's perfectly accurate because. I still think that at least Elizabeth wouldn't do a lot of those things. Emma would in some instances, Emma, part of the whole story of Emma is she is kind of immature and does have to get over that immaturity and grow into her own person. Elizabeth is very witty and clever and snarky. That snarkiness, I think, is where people are like, oh, she's more like an Elizabeth Bennet. Right. But Elizabeth is even more level-headed than Anne acts a lot of the time in this movie like she's she's not an Austin heroine she's not they completely destroyed her they destroyed her and I was so mad at the very beginning (laughs) it was so hard for me to watch this movie guys I had to pause it and walk away like I literally had to stop like it's a movie I, I think the movie is only an hour and 40 minutes long and it took me close to three hours to watch the whole thing because I had to stop keep <laughs> stopping it and do other things because I was so mad and frustrated and it is one of Jane Austen's most underrated books and under like appreciated heroines because she isn't that standout heroine like mm-hmm. Elizabeth or Emma who I think are the more well-known Jane Austen characters. Because they were more modern. And they're the ones that have more adaptations, right? Like Pride and Prejudice has so many, I think. Emma has quite a few as well. Like, 
all of Jane Austen's books, I think, have been adapted into a film adaptation of some kind at least once. But Pride right. and Te- Prejudice and Emma definitely take the lead. Yeah. And I feel like persuasion has not been done as often because Anne is more soft spoken, which isn't as exciting, yeah. which <laughs> I think is hilarious because even in the movie, Lady Russell says to Anne in a scene, like, well, does every person have to be super interesting? To which Anne responds with no, but that doesn't mean I should have to sit in a room with them. And I'm like, that's not who you are. Like, it's not. <laughs> it's like, true. <laughs> and like Anne undermines the story's message. Like Anne know. is supposed to be like, or in, in my opinion, she's one of the main Jane Austen characters you really need to get right. Because mm-hmm. like Elizabeth, you can add a little bit of flair and it's not going to change who she is a little bit or, or too much because she she has that wildfire in her and this is a more mature austin character like it's really mm-hmm. important that she's set apart from the other austin heroines because she is she was written while jane austen was older like she's much more mature she's been through her life of grief we're not supposed to get this very like sassy funny quirky Anne, and it's not just like the things she's thinking that are different it's the, the way she's acting like it would be something different if she was like thinking these sassy thoughts but not acting on them but she just like blurts some of the stuff out and I'm like that's just well and the thing is is that even in the book she doesn't think those thoughts and just keep them to herself she doesn't even have those thoughts because she's kind right? Like there's a difference between being nice and being kind because a nice right. person may still think those negative things and just not say it. And just them. not say it. Whereas like, I feel like a truly genuine kind person, they don't think those negative things and negative thoughts about people as often. Like she genuinely gives people the benefit of the doubt. Right. She's level-headed. She She's understands the, best the people. different circumstances that goes into her weakness is that she was able to be persuaded at one point to not follow her heart. That is what her flaw is. That's like the one flaw that Anne might have is her ability to be persuaded by others. That is her flaw. Otherwise, she isn't a problematic character like at all. (laughs) And this movie Anne is super problematic in a lot of ways. I wonder if that has to do with the chemistry problem a little bit because you almost wonder while you're watching this why does Wentworth like her even like her her? right (laughs) and in the book it's like so clear it's because she's kind and because she thinks things through and she's methodical and all these different things smart (laughs) right and in the movie it's like first we don't really get the chemistry moments so the passion's Mm -hmm. not there second what are the characteristics that he sees in her and it's like she's almost eh? arrogant which is so not Anne right yeah yeah I, she, I will the say, passion and... is still there she's still very passionate about Wentworth but like it's very balanced with her other characteristics because she has that self-control mm-hmm. but you still get the longing and the pining because the passion is present but she has self-control that may which basically drives the whole story along which what makes it take so long is because she's got that self-control <laughs> like yeah and I, I mentioned this in I think the episode that we did uh, on we ship it with the Wentworth and uh, relationship um the fact that because she is such a different like female protagonist from what we see in most media um she I feel like is almost more important because of that because I think it's important for like the sake of representation and just like the sake of showing diversity to show a different kind of woman as a protagonist still succeeding and still getting love and still being valued and appreciated and we don't need her to be an Elizabeth Bennett because we already have an Elizabeth Bennett who is that model of being, you know, brave and sticking to your guns and being a little bit outspoken. And I mean, I love Elizabeth. She's great. I don't relate to her super much. I'm definitely not an Elizabeth. Right. 
but I love her. She's great. But when I read Anne, I relate to her more. I'm like, when I'm in most settings, I'm a lot quieter, more reserved. You know, I like, she's more of an introvert, really. Like Anne is an mm-hmm. introvert and it's nice to see that represented because I feel like a lot of female protagonists are not that way. And they're all very bold and outspoken. And it's nice yeah. to see someone more relatable but still yeah. being the main character. And so I think it's sad that this film, uh, like Netflix decided that the only way they could make her appealing to a mass audience would be to make her this brass, uh, like sassy And it didn't work woman. because everyone hated it. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's kind of just sad to see like that's what they thought they needed to portray in a woman to like be popular. And I just don't think that sends a good message. And so, yeah, it was just, it's just bad. It's preach, just, preach, yeah. preach, 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 preach. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> it was a disservice to the book. It was a disservice to, to the characters. <laughs> and it was a disservice to women because you can, you can still be considered a strong woman and like a confident woman and like a self-assured woman without being outspoken. And mm-hmm. you don't like everybody has different strengths and weaknesses, and are different. It's just what it is. Yes. Um, yeah, and it made me really mad. It sounds it made me really mad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mad that if I you had couldn't to watch tell TV to talk about it because then I was like, great, and then this is giving Netflix another view. Like I don't want yeah. them to get good numbers on can this I take stupid it movie. <laughs> can I, can control I Z, control Z. <laughs> Should have found some bootlegged version so they didn't get the <laughs> numbers, but no. Um, I mean, there's so much more I could say because honestly, it's just like this when it comes to examples, like from the Well, this is one of those rare but it was just times. Bad. I feel like in a lot of our episodes, we say, if you haven't seen the film, I would definitely say go watch it. No. You don't need to. You don't, <laughs> you don't need, need to. Watch this one. <laughs> I wish I had. I, I don't want. I will never watch this movie again. It made me mad more than anything else. Like, <laughs> yeah. just read the book. I'll definitely. Or listen I'll definitely to the audio finished book. my rewatch because I started. Like I said, I started it last night, but I I, I put it on like one point five speed so that way I could like <laughs> get through it that. faster. So I'll definitely finish. <laughs> I, I'll definitely finish the the rewatch, but uh, I won't be. I, I probably won't be coming back to it. <laughs> no, no. If I need a dose of Austin, this will not be where I will turn. Never. Uh, I think it's still Pride and Prejudice for me, man. The Kira Knightley 2005, version. Kira Knightley, yep. every time. <laughs> every time. <laughs> um, it's like what we posted to our story. Mentally, I am here. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Um, do we have Pride and Prejudice? I don't think we had any faux pas that I we have. We have, I know we got at least, I know we got one, but the problem is is there's multiple places that they can send them. So I'm always like, I don't want to miss one. Um, did we get one on Facebook? I remember getting seeing a comment notification on Facebook, but. Um. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I've got a bunch of notifications. Are any of these comments? Or are they just yeah? We're with you on your thoughts. So that's oftentimes what they end up being. Yep. Okay. So I'll just read the one we've got then. Um, this is from Sam. Um, this is on Instagram. But open, please. <laughs> So Sam Berry, she said, for me, the whole tone of the movie was super off. They tried to make a sad book about longing into a snarky comedy. And I think that that's a really good way to put it. To sum everything that we just set up. Yes. I was like, way to really like summarize it into just like one sentence. To tie it in a pretty bow. That's a good, good way to summarize, basically. Um, yeah, the tone was off. They missed the mark, as Steph has said as well. They just right. And again, I just have so many questions for the director. I just 
what was she doing? Why did she want to take it in this direction? Why did she think that was a good idea? And the thing is, is I click and to see what else she's directed. And I don't like recognize anything and there's not very many. So she's a fairly new director. I guess you can mm. maybe chalk some mm. of it up to that. Um, she only has seven other credits for being a director. What a bold choice for being a new director. Like- yeah. I wonder if she felt like she really needed to come out strong with something but do you unique blame, and Do you different. blame the director for the the script writing? I don't know because it depends for what, on the, for the lack production. of chemistry and the way that a lot of those scenes were portrayed. We used to question a lot like who's really to blame? Is it the writers or yeah. is it the director? Because what watched, I know is it's a little bit that of Harry Potter, Potter one. Yeah, the Harry Potter 20th anniversary reunion, where they interviewed a lot of the directors, where the directors specifically talk about certain scenes and admit why they had them do things a certain way. And it's like, oh, it's the director to blame most (laughs) of the time, why things are changed and done a certain way on the on the fly, because the director is viewing the scene and they're the ones saying like no I want you to do it this way I want you to portray this emotion also from from what I know from my time working in production the director generally has the final say on the script so even though the screenwriter is the one writing it it has to be approved that's fair by the director so it is possible that the screenwriters made some of those changes but the director was okay with that so I can still prompt the director yeah so i just she's she's who i blame mostly, it was a I choice guess, it was a choice choices were made okay mistakes were made the most maybe the most obvious time that we already have an answer to this question but the age-old question is was the book better uh, yep yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so much Oh, so much better. I just can't even, I can't with this one. It's so bad. If you have not seen it, you do not need to watch it. Like, don't waste your time, especially if you have read the book. Maybe if you haven't read the book and you're not a huge Austin fan, maybe you can still you enjoy, might enjoy it, it. But like, I don't think so. Like, I really, even without having read the book, the movie is not done well. Like, it's, like we've talked about I think, if, I think if i didn't know who the characters were what the objective or design of it all was like i could probably walk into this blind and maybe appreciate it for what it was but even like if you even knew, then even yeah like i don't know i feel I, like it was still just missing something because like it's been a while since I read the book and I've only read it the one time before we recorded with you guys and so I still I had to look some things up because I kind of forgot the the main story and so I was watching the movie and I was kind of confused at times because it wasn't fully making sense with just like a normal story would right and so I feel like without the context of the book it would be it hard just to seems like it was flow. It was like missing chunks. It seemed almost rushed. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. But it's very yeah. pretty. <laughs> very, it's very pretty, pretty. indeed. Pretty. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. very pretty. <laughs> pretty. We can use that as a descriptor. It's a pretty movie. Um, yeah. Otherwise, um, there's, so there's our thoughts. There's all of our thoughts. Lots of thoughts on Jane Austen's Persuasion um if you haven't listened to our last episode our last episode our actual full-length episode was death on the nile agatha christie so if you're a fan of uh, mystery stuff um we did a couple of agatha christie's books that have been made into movies um we did a mini sode last week talking about um favorite christmas movies to watch um next week's mini sode we'll be doing our uh, some book recommendations and then our final full episode of the year, our Christmas episode, we'll be talking about the Polar Express. Um, 
So that's oh my gosh. what's so exciting going around and coming there. Um, by the time this episode's out, you will not be able to give your thoughts to anything because everything will have already been recorded. <laughs> but, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but check them all out. <laughs> um, and we appreciate you listening. Um, we always, as always, we appreciate we ship it joining us. And yeah, yeah, thanks for, for coming us. on. And uh, do you guys want to ranting with us? <laughs> it was fun. With us. Do you guys want to talk a little bit about maybe what you guys have had going on? Again, as a as a, a general disclaimer, this episode will come out early December. <laughs> yes. Well, um, you know what? We're very like, uh, we're very unsure, like on the time frame for these things so far. But in the next couple listen. of weeks, you'll probably see our Twilight. We we have a few episodes of Twilight that we're going to be putting out there, and I'm really excited for it because I was one of those twilight like at the book premiere kind of people oh yeah so i can't wait to battle out the bella jacob bella edward <laughs> yeah get into that yeah <laughs> so that's going to be coming up for us i don't know Devin, if there's anything else you can think of but finishing up six of crows maybe no, um, yeah i mean that'll be by the time this comes out this will uh be in the past but you guys can check out six of crows as well we dove we dove into those um three couples and our love for them and yeah we're probably gonna be in the middle of our um twilight saga series and we might even have a christmas episode out so <laughs> we'll see what we'll we can see. do people <laughs> you're yeah. gonna talk about a hallmark couple no uh, we should yeah. maybe the Lindsay lohan christmas movie that's oh coming yeah out. that one's oh, coming out <laughs> oh good old Lindsay making a comeback <laughs> <laughs> doing her best yeah um, um if you don't but, follow we ship it on social media you definitely should they're at we ship it podcasts on pretty much everything i think um, yeah, we predominantly roll on instagram instagram so definitely check them out on instagram uh so you can stay updated with their releases and check out their episodes because they're super fun and Thanks. i love them you're awesome yeah it's Thank like you talking with friends about your <laughs> yeah. <favorite. laughs> if you like, it's great um so definitely check them out but uh thanks again guys for joining us as we talked about this and movie happy movie. early happy yes. early congratulations to kaylee yes baby times <laughs> I will be very tired when everyone's actually listening to this. <laughs> um, but in other news, too, if you want to see my baby, I'll probably have shared a picture of my baby when this episode is out. So, um, but we appreciate all of you. Thanks for listening. Um, again, if, if you enjoy listening and you, you like what we do, please leave a review or a rating. Um, it just helps us out. But otherwise, we hope that you have a great week. And don't forget to read. Yay!